And now, Detailing Success and PNS Double Black present the Rennie Doyle Podcast, a podcast for blue-collar entrepreneurs. Hosted by the detailer of Air Force One and founder of both Detailing Success and the Detail Mafia, Rennie Doyle. What's up, dude? Hey there. How are you? I'm good. Been a busy five days. Yeah. Morning, everybody. Well, it, it always seems to be. <laughs> yeah. So I went out and... Uh, you know, saw my dad in New Mexico. He just bought a new home and hung out with him. He's 86 years old. He's killing it. Um, went to get his motorcycle li- – or he went to get his motorcycle license. 86. Oh, there you go. Yep. So, but uh, his life partner's kind of facing some some struggles. So, we went out there to just hang out and see how he's doing and stuff. My brother happened to be out there too. So, that was cool. And then yesterday, went up, did some magical testing at uh, the PNS uh, headquarters. Yay. Yeah, that was a quick trip. Moving the needle, moving the needle. So it's uh, been a, been a, we're getting ready a lot. There's so much stuff going down, right? But, uh, you know, today's, today's, we'll, we'll jump into this and we'll have a little fun. Uh, competition happens at the bottom, collaboration happens at the top. Uh, you know, it's a buzz term that's been around for a bit. And, uh, but if you simplify, we're going to bring this, break it down today and just, you know, kind of share our opinion of what it what it uh, what it means you know so good job putting this together chris chris put all the the outline together and then i went in and kind of just put uh my personal touch to it but you know again competition happens at the bottom collaborations happens at the top what just mean we we've all seen you know the i mean the o- online world of of business is you know and especially in the detailing industry <clears throat> it, it's nutty i mean there's there's a lot of great people and there's a lot of there's more great people, but it doesn't take a, uh, it, it, it only takes one mating pair of rats, uh, to, to infest the ship real quick. <laughs> and we, uh, we can, we can see that happen in, in, in really good forms and conversations, uh, all the time. But, um, you know, the good thing is there's a lot of good people out there and, uh, there's a lot more collaboration going on these days than there ever has been for before. And we'll, we'll even go in that a little bit. So, um, so some fun, fun facts today, I was listening to some music I hadn't listened to in a while. So I'd love to see in your messages and then we'll have Chris read it out. You know, what were you guys listening to the last music you're listening to? So I just got done, um, playing some Wang Chung and back in the eighties, man, they were huge and they did a lot of, uh, movie, um, the music for movies and so forth, but, uh, they've got an orchestra based, um, soundtrack right now uh uh recordings that it's all orchestra and uh pretty interesting so chris what what was the last music you listened to uh you know there's a good chance it was tom petty because he's my all-time favorite and uh, i listen to that quite a bit but um you know i listen to a lot of uh other cool stuff i was actually just yesterday i had on a little bit of a guy named robert finley it's a a blues rock Hmm. um musician so a little, little, little bit grungy, a little bit fun. There you go. Shine down to oh. Willie Nelson. Morning. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Yeah. Queen in the nineties, R and B. There you go. Like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I've been on to Spotify has got this AI technology. I think I was sharing that with you. Yeah. And I've really been using, using it quite a bit. And, and I, dude, I got to, lo- I love it because what they're, what's happening now is it's really picking up kind of the genre of music I like and different. I like a lot of different things and they're throwing a lot of new artists in there. And some of them are complete misses, but man, some of them, some of the recommendations it's used, it's really got me hooked on some, some new music, you know, and um, you know, I love blues and jazz kind of music and it's got me going on that, you know, (laughs) Richmond, North of Richmond. Yeah. Oliver, (laughs) boy, I'll tell you, Oliver, Anthony, um, my brother just bought, my 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 middle brother is uh um he's really he's a he's a great guitarist great musician so he just bought i can't it's gonna somebody's gonna have to tell me what guitar that was that 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 uh oliver anthony played in that but it's a it's literally a steel guitar it's a metal guitar and it's got a really distinctive huh. sound to it and uh, my brother just ordered one there's get this um it's uh Wow, listen to this. Just heard Rattlesnake Melt. Yeah, I must be getting old. I've never heard of any of these people. Yeah, I got to check that one out. <laughs> Ian, that's, yeah, Rattlesnake Melt. 
Hold on. Do you milk rattlesnakes or is it rattlesnake milk? You got to clarify, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Amity of fiction. Lenny, Lenny uh, Lashley's. I'm probably a gang of one. I'm probably Lashley's. Um, yep. That I'll have to go check those out. So I'll, I'll take and write those down because I, I love I love cool music. I love people influence my music a lot. Tears for fear as well. There's a, there's one. You know, uh, um, classical when you're polishing. That's cool. That's cool. You know, Rick, Rick Smith said Willie Nelson. Do you know that Willie Nelson? That guy comes out with at least one new album a year, at least uh, at a minimum. Dude. Still, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the positive side of weed. You know, just keeps you going, man. That, and now, you know, you got to, I mean, how old's Willie Nelson now? Anybody know? He's 90 years old. God, that dude's relative. I mean, you know, I mean, you look at people like that. We This just went down a whole nother rabbit hole. But you look at that, you look at Snoop Dogg, you know, you look at these people that, you know, all these new generation of pop stars, you know, they're, you know, what's going to get funny. They're all going to get fucking old, too. And then yes. what are they going to do, you know? But, I mean, hopefully that's the goal, as Steve Harvey says. But, you know, oh, hold on. Five Finger Death Punch. That's my kids. Love that. Whoever said that one. <laughs> uh, love that one. Um, yeah, it's Willie Nelson. I've got – he's got so – and he's got – oh, hey, man, this is exactly what we're talking, collaboration. You know, how many oh, yeah. times has, has Willie Nelson collaborated? How many – oh, Snoop Dogg. How many times has he collaborated with who? I mean, just look at the, who we're talking about right there is two completely different people from, or are they, you know, are people really that different? I don't think so. Um, but there's two top artists from different generations. There's 30 plus years age difference. They're one's really going at it, you know, and is when most people are in the grave already, this guy's coming out with albums, you know? And so it's, yep. you know, I mean, collaboration's huge. I mean, it's just huge, man. So, uh, Windrose, there's there's some good stuff. I'm gonna have to go check out. We gotta we gotta you know mark some of this down. So, hey, I'm gonna jump into this. This was cool. I'm glad that we went there. Um, Reggae's and and uh, '90s West Coast. Okay, what about the East Coast, man? You know, got to think about that. Um, so, hey, upcoming event, SEMA. I mean, it's you know right right around the corner. Our party on Wednesday night. Hey, l- let me jump into that real quick. Um, you know, we've been so fortunate. We started this, you know, the gathering of detailers as a way for a few of us to have a cigar, um, you know, and just kick it. And I will have some cigars, but if you're going to come up and ask me for a cigar, you better be willing to smoke it with me. <laughs> um, but we, um, we started it kind of just as a way of a few people getting together, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and, and, and now we've got, you know, last year, about 500 people there. Listen, we're changing. We're, we're, we're going to take and really put the map on. SEMA knows there's detailing out there, but I think we're a subcategory underneath the subcategory that's a line item, you know? And so we yeah. are, A, going to do something really cool for kids. So our goal is $25,000 uh, to donation. So everything that we, all the proceeds, once this sucker's paid for, and I'll give you a little insight. Last year, once this is paid for, we're going to donate all that money to, to the charities. Uh, and they're really cool charities. I'll have, I'll have Chris go into it here in a second. But last year, Diane and I decided that we are, we missed the mark a little bit. So we actually put in funds from our own pockets and it, and it wasn't a small amount to make sure that we got to, to our goal. And so last year it was, I think it was a little over $5,000, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah. And this year it's, it's going to be $25,000 is our goal. So that's huge. And we've got, a lot of collaboration going on with this party. A lot of people in the industry are stepping up and collaborating with us. It's, can't do it by ourselves. No way. No way. But, you know, um, Chris, tell, tell them a little bit about SEMA Cares and what 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 those charities are. Well, uh, so SEMA Cares is a charitable organization. They're, a, what is it called? A 5013C, so an actual, you know, charity. But what they do is uh, they... Uh, collect funds or, you know, um, donations to help fund three separate children's charities. And their focus is just on these three. Um, and all three of these have ties to the automotive community or the racing community or something like that. Uh, but one of them is called the, uh, Austin Hatcher foundation for pediatric cancer. Uh, the other one is called child help. 
And then the uh, the final one is uh, Victory Junction, which is a camp for either terminally ill kids or kids that have been through a lot, you yeah. know, so they can go have a little bit of fun. Well, um, you. you know, so so all the all the money that SEMA Cares collects uh, goes to these charities, uh, I, I believe, evenly. And uh, so it's a good thing. And so we're we're funneling that money into C- SEMA Cares so we can support those three charities as well. And uh, so, you know, the like Rennie said, the proceeds from the party are going to uh, end up going to this. And as well as we're, we're asking people to get out there and uh, make a donation, you know, I mean, it's, you know, the, the benefit is it is a tax write off, especially if you need one. Um, but we'd like you to just go and make a direct donation to SEMA Cares. All the social media posts that, you know, announce the party and talk about the party has a link in it. So you could easily find it and make that direct donation. We'd love it if you guys could help out because uh, like Rennie said, we want to make a big impact. Um, we want the detailing industry to make a big impact. We want SEMA and SEMA cares to be like, Hey, these guys are awesome, you know, and, and really put us on the map with them and do a really cool thing and a good thing at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, and, and, and guys, again, this, you can go right to the site. This doesn't come to us. The only thing we're going to collect is donations at the door to make, to make it, we're going to sell raffle tickets. We've got at this party, you got to come, we got thousands and we've got a really efficient way of doing the raffle prizes this year. It's not going to take long. We're going to do it in like six bundles, you know, maybe eight. And we're going to do it sporadic through the night. We don't know if we're going to make people be there or not. I think we're going to, uh, because if we spread it out during the night, if people leave, they got a chance earlier in the night. And the people that came a little less or a little later, they got a chance in the night. But the biggest thing that we, has happened is um, is Bob and Dave from PNS and then our the entire staff over at Dynabraid, they want to make this event free to you guys still. And so that's huge. So they've really come in and help, you know, help us. Uh, Diane, Chris and I and Oscar and the Mafia and everybody else really make that happen for you guys. And then we're just going to have these these great raffle tickets. And uh, again, 100% of the proceeds are going to go to those donations. We will make the receipt uh, available when we donate that. And uh, we're really excited about it. Now, some people I just saw, what's the biggest benefit of SEMA for the detailing community? Two things, Rick. One's collaboration, exactly what we're talking about now. When you get to know people, especially people at a higher level, that are making money and they're investing and they're buying property and they're buying their shops and they're, they've, they've, they're, they're living a good life and they're, 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 they're making, they're making plenty of money, but have plenty of time. Uh, all these things. That's probably the key thing is just getting to know people. These relationships will change everything at this event. Now, probably even more important than that, but not more important than that is the education days upstairs is that a lot of details aren't, t- I hear people saying, you know, even in our sphere of influence, hey, I'm not going to go, what? it's not hanging out on the floor. I mean, you, you go back and, and Jim Gogan, you know, Mark Johnson, all of us in the early days, we didn't hang out on the floor. Matter of fact, most of the time was spent upstairs in the educational. Thing. They have got some of the am- most amazing speakers upstairs educating people. Yep. I, I mean, it's, it's incredible. So Rick, there's, there's, there's those two reasons. Um, when you take, when you take the time, to go upstairs and learn. And then you're, you're, you know, there's an event every single night at SEMA now, you know, there's ours on Wednesday night. There's, there's a ton of them, ton of great events. But when you're mingling like that, it, it, it's got the possibility of really changing your life. And it did mine change, change the, it changed my career and it changed my friendships. I've got, I've built friendships up that are la- lifelong friendships um, just from these chance encounters uh, meetings at, at SEMA and other shows. So it's uh, pretty amazing. So, yeah. Hey, get there. Oh, I was gonna say, and hey, guys. In in addition to just helping out and and hopefully making a donation to these guys, um, please help us out and maybe just go find the post and share it and and spread the word. You know, we we all follow other detailers. We're all buddies with other detailers, and we want to make sure that uh, we get the word out. So share it to your personal social media, share it in Facebook groups, whatever you can. If you guys could help us spread the word, I'd appreciate it. You know, no, you know Chris. It, it's amazing. It's amazing how, how much we push the event and how many people we find out still never hear about it. Right. And, you know, and again, this is, we really, you know, why would we want to have SEMA know about us? Because there's not even a category you can check. And, 
we we just want to be recognized as an industry at that level. It's really important because there's a lot of things going on in the background. If SEMA starts recognizing us and we go in to have a sick code uh, or, you know, a, 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 a recognize that we're in a recognized industry. And right now we're not in, in, in the United States. We're not. But if we go to do that, SEMA might help us out with the legislature to make that happen. So there's a lot of reasons to go through this. But the other thing is, is this party, you're going to see who we're collaborating with. Everybody's invited. Uh, I've got a, a couple people I necessarily don't get along with. Um, you know, we're not enemies or anything, but, you know, we, don't, we just don't hang out. Man, I always invite them. I want them there. They're a big part of the industry. And even though that we don't, you know, we don't, um, we clash a little bit, maybe personality wise or whatever. God, I don't care. It's not about me. It's about us. It's about the whole industry. And so it's just, um, it's, it's unreal. I mean, it's just, it's pretty amazing. It really is. It's pretty amazing. Um, so, okay, let's jump in this. So, you know, come on by the PNS booth. We're trying to, we're trying to, um, take in and, and trying to get Bob to do something kind of cool. Uh, Bob and Dave for us. So a lot more there to, uh, soon. Uh, Dynabraid, come by the Dynabraid booth. You know, we've got the new tool that's going to, you can come by and take a test drive. Also, we got some pretty amazing handouts there. We've got a shirt design that's uh, pretty cool. You're going to have to earn it by posting on uh, social media, but you're going to want to get one of these things. Um, dinner with detailers is Christmas dinner with detailers. God, can you believe we're talking about this? Is oh, so I <laughs> I had to go to Home Depot yesterday. Yeah, they've yeah, already Christmas. pushed all the Halloween stuff into a corner. It's all Christmas already. That's crazy. How? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, hey, I want one of those thirteen foot skeletons next year. Oh, they still have they still had one of those. You can go get one this year if you want. Well, no, they said there's that the only ones they have are display and they don't sell them. You, it, I mean, it's like a it's like a cult falling for those big old huge skeletons. <laughs> I don't know why I want one, but I do. Um. So yeah, dinner, uh, uh, Christmas dinner with detailers is going to be, uh, we're going to be announcing that here real shortly uh, here in Southern California. And then nationwide is we're getting our training centers to start doing uh, coffee and coatings and profit events across the nation. And so uh, we're going to see, I'll, I would probably come in live, um, broadcasting live from this shop uh, to wherever it's going on. It's If you haven't been to one of those, uh, they're pretty insane. I would love to figure out how to try to do one down at mobile tech, uh, you know, on a patio or in, in a room. I, I, I really don't know. Oh, well, uh, well, ac actually we are having one at mobile tech. We are. So we, uh, <laughs> I've got you booked for a, a one hour slot to do coffee coatings and profits. Oh yeah. The there we go. Room. So see, Chris is way ahead of me. That's awesome. So I'm glad. So come to that because it's really, it's it, none of them are ever the same. If you come around, there's 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 huge post-it notes all over our shop with all the notes that we take from that. It's a lot of fun. So that's having, um, you know, that's going to have an impact. It really is. So have you noticed we have we have some great people in this industry? I mean, I mean, just there are so many good people in different camps, and you know, people will call it clicks. I think just some people have built up a better relationship, you know, with others. Some are better at building relationships. And then there's some that maybe don't maybe the maybe those relationships are just a little different. Maybe you, know, it, you don't have any need to be in those relationships for good or bad reasons. Doesn't matter. But on the flip side, we got some hate going on, you know. And it's going to get worse. I got I got bad news for you. And the, and the BS and the small minded people, they're going to attack more and more because things are going to get tight. The economy's showing some fracture cracks right now in different areas, and I I think that people are slowing down in some areas. Some aren't at all. Some are just going. But the term competition happens uh, at the bottom, collaboration at the top. It's a common saying these days, but, you know, we see that when we have an event, not even if you're in the mafia, is that even within our membership, is a lot of people say, oh, it's clicky. Oh, there's these, these, these groups. No, because there's people, some of us have known each other for 20 years, and it takes going, we've gone to hundreds of events together. And, 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 and it takes effort, but when you start collaborating and you start showing your value and you br start bringing something to the game, it's easy to talk about what you're going to bring, but you got to show it and bring it into those relationships and collaborations is that is, is, is the top people I know in this industry and within any industry, they sit, talk, break bread and collaborate on things. They go after things. It's 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 often when you when you, when you don't have these situations, 
and you see it again. This is why the, the forms and I stay away from them is that often there's a, there's a cutthroat mentality. When you see a cutthroat mentality, you've either got just a whacked out individual. If they're successful, they're just, they're just a nutcase. Stay away from them. But a lot of times what it is, is that people are hurting and they're seeing other people succeed and the jealousy and envy steps in and it just gets the best of them. And you got to be really careful. I stay away from all that stuff. I've, I have eliminated myself out of almost all the forums for a reason is that I got plenty of good people to hang out with and I, and they're vetted and, and I know who and what they are and they help me be what they are. I help them be what I am. That's where collaboration comes in. So now collaboration, co cooperation, it's essential at achieving your objectives. Here's why I just mentioned it. You go to SEMA, you go to mobile tech, you even go to regional, you even go, come out to a coffee coatings and, in uh, profits event is when you take the time to know the people to get to know the people there is that what's going to happen is you're going to start at a nucleus in your area at the, the center of your, your market. You're going to start building each other up. There's always going to be low line competition. That's okay. They need to be there to do a certain degree. They need to be taking in the work that you don't want to do. But when you start collaborating and I've done this in several markets and in several industries and in several businesses, I've seen, Hundreds of people do it in, in, in a car care industry, in the car wash industry. When you start collaborating with movers and shakers, it's going to change your life. They're going to go up. You're going to take and help propel them. And, and they're going to help lift you up. And at some time, you might even surpass them. And a really good person, the cl best collaboration is they won't mind if you do. They might be in a lifestyle that they don't want what you want, but they're going to help you get what you want. That's good collaboration. And so the top levels, again, is that we, we gravitate. It gravitates. And we're going to give you an example of our collaboration here in just a second, is that we gravitate towards positive. We gravitate towards opportunity. We gravitate towards smart minds. We gravitate towards wisdom. Um, I just watched a video last night. Somebody sent it over to me. Um, Jimmy Akers up in Northern California and, and, uh, and Oscar, and they sent it to me and, and, you know, I, you, you can go back in the history of, of online and all the really, really top level entrepreneurs out there in our industry today, you won't find them talking shit or even saying one negative thing, one negative thing about a product line or a product, nothing. They won't say it. But yet we get these these people on. I think that they, they think they're building it up by saying, you know, they're they're being passive aggressive. That that's a race to the bottom, because these manufacturers are going to look at you. If you're doing that with with one manufacturer, you're going to do it with them. They're going to completely stay away from you. And and the value of that is, you're just you're just an attention hog. That's all it's going to do is you're just an attention hog, and you're going about it at the the wrong way. I mean. You can, you can say, no, I'm not. You, I don't care. I, I've been around long enough and I've watched enough of these people hang themselves to where they do it. And so people at the top have a broader perspective of the industry leaders. They get a bigger picture. Here's the cool thing. You go to these events. You go to SEMA. You come to our party. Is You go to Mobile Tech. You come, you come to the gatherings. Um, you're going to have access to the top level CEOs and founders and principals, and, and, and influencers, you're going to be able to go talk to them. And if you're smart, you'll go up and say, wow, you know, I, hey, hey, Bob Phillips, man, I, I dig what you guys have done. Uh, you know, what, what was the biggest challenge? Just, just ask them one simple question and then vacate out of there. You do that 10 times at SEMA this year, you're going to come back a different person. That's called collaboration. Now, also, <laughs> we... You can't just talk about collaboration. Right now, let's talk about collaboration. Is PNS and Rennie Doyle Double Black collaboration? That's a big collaboration. Uh, one of the biggest of my life. Uh, huge is that my collaboration with Dynabraid, brand new tool from the ground up. That's a collaboration. We're going to show you a lot more of this right now. But I have three more right now in the works. I have an accessory item, two accessory items. One of them 
doesn't even know that it's coming towards them, their company right now is develop. And we just got another one that Chris, Chris took home last week to test out. And so we've got all these different collaborations going um, force multipliers. Every time that you do this and, and let's lay it down in your local market. So we had a Carl's ultra shine. That was our biggest competition. Carl hated me. And then he realized that I was winning the battle without being cheaper, that I was double his price. So Carl would never have lunch with me. I wanted to go out and, and just work with him and, and not price fix or anything else, but just tell him you can charge more. He was a good detailer, right? So we got to be pretty good friends, and we would just refer each other back and forth. And and Carl was nearly as expensive as us by, the, by a couple years into it. We collaborated is that we would share with each other, hey, man, this person doesn't pay their bills. We had a blacklist. We just we wouldn't deal with people that were going to pay their bills. If they're hopping around to different to different companies and they're not paying their bills and they're having stuff done and we're out to chase them, Carl and I shared that information very quietly. And we just didn't do business with that person because we knew that we're going to get stuck with it too. Um, but we learn new things for each other. We develop new skills and knowledge. Even the expansion of your of your vocabulary change when you're hanging out and collaborating with people uh, of different influence. You're going to improve on your problem solving skills. You're going to be more productive, more more efficient. All those things are going to happen from from collaboration. And again, a force multiplier is that you've got somebody else a champion talking about you. Now, collaboration can also. This is a really good part that that Chris added in. It can help an entire industry. And, and let me tell you, we are growing. We are, we're at a point where I never thought, and we're going to keep going that direction, is that we are at an area to where entrepreneurs can make more money than ever doing what we do. We can live a better life than we've ever lived. We can retire out wealthy, wealthy in my, in my mind, maybe not in yours, but mine. And we can all do all these amazing things that were a decade ago. Those were really tough things, all of them. Very, very few. Very few will still reach that when you look at the mass number of people in the industry because a lot of people, they huddle in. They, they're, they're like a hermit crab in a shell. They go up in that shell. They walk around. They lay on the ocean floor, and nobody knows they're, they're even there. There's, you can't tell if there's a crab in there or if it's just an empty shell. And so a lot of people just huddle up and, and, not, and not collaborate. But again, those that do is you're going to build stronger relationships and you're going to create a shitload of demand for your company. Simple as that. And, and that's the power of collaboration. Now, today's competitive world is more important than ever for organizations and the industries to foster a culture of collaboration. What do we mean by that? By working together. More is achieved by working together than sitting there and having a dogfight. The dogfight, nobody wins. You know who wins in a dogfight? The veterinarian. You know who wins in these fights? social media because they draw you know people for some reason just love drama and I, I was there for a short time when the when the when the forums first when the forum first popped up we go in and i'd poke somebody because i know it would get them going um but you know we grew out of that really quickly and i was still i was still learning the the fine tuning of entrepreneurship so the upside what 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 takes in what's the upside of all this it opens up a floodgate of thinking simple as that man is that, you know, Chris is heading up here tomorrow because we're going to collaborate. Uh, we collaborated yesterday with our team up up at the headquarters with PNS. We collaborate with Dynabraid on a regular basis on the launch of this tool and, the, and, and then the, the progress for the next tools. You know, all of these things, it just, it gets you thinking and it creates even more opportunity for wealth building, not income, but wealth. Is at the top, they're not necessarily worried about the income. They're worried about the wealth building, long-term effects of what they're doing now and how it's going to earn them income that's going to turn into wealth. And so a lot of people don't understand that, is that that principle of what we just spoke about in itself is, is confusing to people. It's not. Is is that some stage you got to stop just living paycheck to paycheck and and start taking in and and making a move towards you know sustaining wealth. Uh, so what, what, what this poor kid is doing right now, and you, listen, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, the PNS story, you know, I, 
I mean, I've, th- this has been an incredible journey. I mean, an incredible journey with PNS to, to see a company, you know, 63 years old, uh, somewhere right in there, grow as they have. I mean, it's just been, it's been cool. Uh, Bob and I also will often sit there and say, God, we wish we would have done this 20 years ago. We wouldn't have the success. We weren't ready. We, we hadn't, we didn't have enough collaboration, enough brain power to make it happen 20 years ago. It happened now. But, you know, I worked with Shell Oil, you know, almost 30 years ago. Um, we co-developed another line, collaboration, Sonex, collaboration, Flex, collaboration, and again, Dynabraid, collaboration. Um, we've got a new accessory tool coming out that it's, we've got test units sitting right here. Got a second one we just got test units on. We've got a third one I'm going to introduce to a manufacturer. We've got training centers all over the country. We have our brand partners. Um, I mean, it's just, it's crazy to think that, you know, Chris, go down our brand partners real quick. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. So, um, th- I mean, this is, this is collaboration within the industry, kind of at the the biggest, you know, highest level, right? I mean, these, these are companies that, you know, in, in a nutshell, they just, they supported Air Force One this year. They, uh, they, su- they're supporting the, the 10th annual gathering of detailing professionals this year at SEMA. But these companies, in my opinion, see the bigger picture, right? Sure. They want a little bit of, uh, you know, they want a little bit of exposure and all that, but they see the bigger picture in collaborating, not just with us, but with each other and the entire industry to lift it up. So, um, man, it's a, it's a long list. There's actually, I don't know, two dozen of them, but it's PNS, a uh, Dynabraid, you're able Road FS, Detailers Roadmap, Buff and Shine, Angel Wax, Grit Guard, Flex, Auto Fiber, Rupez, IGL Coatings, Dr. Color Chip, IK Sprayers, Detailed Image, Car Supplies Warehouse, Lake Country, SB3 Coatings, Car Candy, Onyx Coatings, Orbis X, Ragtop, Auto Geek, uh, CCI, which is Ceram Coatings Inc., color lock and Aquatech coatings. Um, that's a heck of a list, you know, and, uh, and there's a lot of companies that honestly, I think need to jump on board. <laughs> what is, you know? You, you, you know, you look at our first one, it was, there was one, you know, so yep. we made a long way. And, and again, is that we could turn this in. I could turn this. I, we, we could probably walk away from this party with 50 grand in our pockets. If we really wanted to, that's not my goal, man, is that I want to teach and still and influence people to go to a new level. And I want to leave a crater. I don't want to leave an impact. I want to leave a crater on this industry, you know, just absolutely. And I want the people that have got eyes on this is to do the same thing is to just, just take and absolutely leave a, their, their, their footprint on this when they, when they go. So it's yeah. uh We'd love to take and, uh, you know, have anybody that's out there, if you've got, again, an influence within the industry is that this is, we are trying to take and, you know, a rising tide lifts all ships. Look at the amount of ships on this list that Chris just read off. Look at it. I mean, that, that's impressive. So you got to ask yourself, parting words, is that, you know, first off, PNS, they love, they love to have us as, as Switzerland neutral. Dynabred, same thing. You know, they've got their, of course they want to make money. I'll, I'll hear amateur hour entrepreneurs say, oh, they're just doing it for the money. Well, what the hell are you doing it for? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, you got to go pay the bills. <clears throat> they're new and nobody any good if they're going broke. Of course they want exposure. Yeah. I can tell you every single company on that, that Chris just, they're not doing it for money. Th- this supporting air, a lot of what we do and most of these companies support it again and again and again, they're supporting the grand idea of humanity of doing something good for others and building your industry up. And, and, and I say your industry, because if you've made a dime off of it, guess what? It's your industry. What's in it for me. What's in it for me is making a better industry. So you make more, that's what it's in it for you. So you've got to look at those things that way. You've got to get excited You've got to go and meet other detailers. You've got to take and, you know, and the thing is a lot, a lot of, you're not going to see the clowns there. They, they won't show up. 
You know, there'll be a couple circus members, but most of the clowns won't dare show up to events like this because they're going to get, they're going to get, you can see them and, and they're going to stay behind. They're going to stay in the tent. You know, they're going to stay in the clown tent and they're going to do clown around with each other. They, they don't go to these events. Who you're going to be taking a rubbing elbows with is movers and shakers and people that you want to collaborate with. And it's pretty big. So, yep. um, you know, collaboration happens. I love this to fill the, the mental void. We are lacking. We can grow with knowledge and sharing. McGuy Kirby. That was a great saying right there. Um, uh, right on. Take your competition to lunch. Best thing I ever did. Chris, uh, Seton, the same thing here, brother. Ditto. Um, Cowboy detailing in the house. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of great imp uh, uh, input with this, you know, uh, today, we hope that we've kind of helped you look at things a little differently. Um, Chris, what's up for next week? Do we have next week's, do you have the schedule for next week up? Oh goodness. Um, I, probably, okay. should have, I probably should have looked ahead. I didn't No, but Hey, we'll come to you next Wednesday. Um, and uh, we can't wait, start prepping for seems SEMA right around the corner. And, and, and again, it, let me make this really clear. If you come to the party, please, 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 please come up and say hi. Uh, if you're a personal person and you're a cool person, come up and give me a hug. Um, if you're an asshole, don't. Um, it's, 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 if you're an asshole, I think hanging around with cool people will make you not an asshole. Is that, you know, it, I think we can even take that. If you're kind of a challenged individual, well, you know what? Come out and hang out with us, man. We got a lot of tough people. Men and women are tough. They're tough, man. They've done, they've done some crazy shit in their life, right? Some really tough uh, skill sets. And man, they're teddy bears. You know, they're teddy bears. And so, come on out if you need a, a change of scenery in your in your sphere of influence. Just isn't right, and it's impacting you in the wrong way. Come hang out. We'll change that for you. We'll get you going in the right direction. You know, we'll coach you a little bit. But make sure to come up and, and, and say hi to us. We'll see you at the booths. We're going to be back before SEMA. You know, we got a couple more of these before then, three of them, I think. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're really excited. Um, it doesn't cost anything to lift another up. Starting now, you'll be rewarded immensely. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what. Um, Chris is saying he's laying down some wisdom. We need to get him. He should have done the podcast this morning. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Spot free. <laughs> Uh, you, Hey man, uh, you bet it's, uh, doing again, spot free. Look at, look at what, look what's going on in their business. You know, it's just pretty cool. What's happening. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rick just Rick, opened Rick's, up a new shop. Rick's killing it, man. So a lot of people killing it. And Hey, if you got a killer story, make sure we get it before the next, uh, podcast, you know, and Oh, 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 what's some that? of you this week wrote me letters, handwritten letters. And I'm going to write back this week. So I'm going to take a day probably tomorrow and write those back. Um, I'm not going to give out my address right now because I got quite a few letters to write. But I love it. Is that We got some pen pals going and it's all handwritten. And one of the people asked, he doesn't have really good writing. So I'm going to take and do a video and show him. I didn't either as a special ed kid. I still my my cursive isn't good. But does anybody write in cursive anymore? Um, I mean, I do just to keep it going because it's almost like a. It's almost like a, it's almost like Latin. It's a lost, it's a, it's a lost form of communications, right? Oh, I think they used to teach you how to write cursive in third grade. Yeah. And, yeah. and I just found out, you know, my wife's a second grade teacher. And just the other day she was telling me how uh, she has to teach her second graders how to type. Wow. I didn't, I didn't learn how to type until I was in junior high. And that was on a that was on a typewriter. <laughs> I didn't learn to type until I was damn near thirty. You know. Yep. I didn't... still I still say though, out of out of everything I did in junior high and high school, learning how to type was the best skill I learned. Well, here's I'll tell you, I agree with that. I did take one semester of typing, and when I got into computers, it helped. It didn't take me hardly any, so I'll ditto that. And then here's the other thing. I and people laugh at this, but I come from an Italian influence. You know, my mom's side of the family, Vaco. Huge Italian family. I took home ec. I took a cooking class in high school, and I freak, I got ragged on for taking that class. But you know what? I learned my way around the kitchen, and I could cook, and I know the baselines of it. And it was that was one of and and then uh, drama is acting in in, in stagecraft. Um, oh. 
I wish more kids would do that because it would, you, you learn to get into your mind and it's just, it's, it's wonderful. Our, our two of our, our do- all of our kids are musicians. They love music and I, and, and, and I'm not. Um, but two of our kids were really into performing arts and it, it changed their lives. It changed their lives. So well, little, li- little Joe, you know, my daughter, she's 11 and, uh, just on look at that Monday, she's getting off the bus. I'm picking her up from the bus stop and she's carrying a electric bass. The thing is as tall as she is because she's not crazy big yet, but that's what she's learning to play in the high school band. And so, she brings this thing home. I'm like, well, how are you supposed to practice this? So I had to go out and buy her an amp. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to take in two, two instruments. I've always wanted to take and learn to, to play the stand-up bass. Yeah, she'll be doing that too. So oh, stand-up man. bass and the electric bass, you know. I, I, that thing. And then, believe it or not, the uh, bagpipes. Yeah, no. That's, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be rough. Time would kill me. You know, <laughs> she, wouldn't, she, she wouldn't be the only one <laughs> yeah no so hey a lot of great input uh, oh look at that man our kids learned to cursive in first grade and type on second they were homeschooled there 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 you go taking it to yourself man it's it's it is i still write in cursive every once in a while and i gotta tell you it 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 can be a challenge to write a letter out in cursive you know when i print yeah. so much better um i print a lot I do write, I handwrite a lot. All my notes are in handwritten. I don't, I don't type most of my notes. Uh, even, even the outlines for these, these go into the notes page in, in, in my iPhone. So I can keep track of it, but the whole outline is done with my mapping and, and writing out notes. So it's uh well, Hey, go have a powerful rest of the week, man. And uh, I've got to go spray a, uh, a tree uh, that's got some kind of bug fungus on it. So, Oh, there you go. Go do that at some point this morning and kind of take a slow day and uh, catch up with some stuff. So y'all take care, man. Thanks for coming in. And again, collaborate, you know, work together. Uh, if you think that as this is a separate, a separate thing is that it's a quick race to the bottom. So uh, go change somebody's life today. Tell them what they mean to you. And we will see you next week. See you tomorrow, Chris. Yep. I'll be up there tomorrow. We'll see what everybody car you next- up here. What's that? What car are you driving up here? Uh, I don't know yet. That's a good question. Dude, we need to go. I, I just found a GT3, man. We need to go test drive it. Oh, yeah. Well, there, there you go. I tell you what. I'll just get the company card, and I'll bring you a GT3. Yeah. No, you got to have that one. <laughs> this thing's. This thing This thing is – I keep looking at it. Oh, damn. God. I told Diane, it's only $200 more a month than our, than our property. No, oh, I well, hey, I forgot to mention, you know, over the weekend I went up to Monterey to uh Porsche Rensport reunion. I saw my fair share of Porsches for a while. Um there were there were only I don't know, a thousand of them there. Mm. Something like that. Mm. Only a thousand. Only. See, I get around that. I mean, Diane's little Porsche is right behind us. And I love that car, man. I took it down the hill the other day and it's like, woo, man. You know, if yeah. you want to drive, that car's plenty. If you know how to drive, you know, it's just, whew, I just love getting in that thing, but it needs new tires. Those tires are a little aged out for what, how I drive. But Black Widow Detailing wants us to bring him a GT3 too. Yeah, that'll, that'll be cool. What what color? What color? I know my color. I know it. This car's badass. <laughs> I keep looking at it. It's like, oh. Yeah. Is it, it orange? So- oh, yeah. <laughs> Beadmaker orange, Dynabraid orange. I mean, dude, oh, man. It's just. I love orange, you know. Well, you got my, you know, my uniform shirts right here from back in the day. So, uh, yeah, hold on. I've received 100 messages today with restream chats. Look at that. Okay, blue and black, blue and black, blue and black, huh? Blue and black. Uh, let, let's lean toward blue. Uh, black, you know, black cars are a full time job, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's it. <laughs> yeah, white. I want a light color. All right, guys. Hey, we're out of here. Take care. And uh, again, go make an impact in somebody's life. We'll see you later. Thanks for listening to the Rennie Doyle podcast, brought to you by Detailing Success and PNS Double Black. Listen to new episodes weekly and be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And don't forget to share with your friends and colleagues. 